Hey everyone! Hey everyone, I am Emily Fox with Campaign for Southern Equality, she, her. I am the social worker in residence here at CSE, um, and today we're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Anise Mabry of the Tears Free Academy, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to give her a few minutes to join our conversation, um, but I can give some context behind the conversations that we've been having this week. Um, so on Juneteenth, weekend of this year, the Campaign for Southern Equality launched a special Black Lives Matter grant round for Black LGBTQ Southerners doing amazing work in their communities. The grantee list included groups that do birth work and doula services, media arts and filmmaking for Black trans people, a high school diploma program uh, for LGBTQ youth and sex workers, which we're talking to Dr. Mayberry about that today. Uh, both trans feminine and trans masculine support groups, rural drop-in centers, the list goes on. Um, so we're really excited to continue to lift up the work that these folks and these organizations are doing um, by talking with some of these grantees this week and sharing those conversations with you. Uh, I also, oh, here's Dr. Mayberry. Yeah, so as we're waiting for her to join us, um, I want to let folks know that we are happy uh, to report that we've launched another one of our Black Lives Matter. Um, hey, Dr. Mayberry. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm just letting folks know that we have launched another round of our Black Lives Matter uh, grants, and that application is live right now. So if folks want to learn more or nominate someone, they can uh, go to southernequality.org and the link for the application is on the bottom of our homepage. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, I'm excited and I'm excited about yeah. the second round too, um, because mm -hmm. not only can organizations apply, but everyday people can nominate your favorite organization. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that you, um, someone nominated you as well. Absolutely. So that's how we were able to get connected with the work that you're doing. And so I'm excited. I'm <laughs> going to be nominating um, two African-American led trans organizations for the next grant. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. We're excited. Spreading the good energy. Absolutely. You know, it's <laughs> like I always say, when nonprofits collaborate, everyone wins. I'm actually going to close my door, Emily, because there's construction. Are we good or can you hear the construction? I'm good, but if you want to go ahead and do that, I can I can kind of redo some introduction. Okay, perfect. I'm going to close yeah. the door. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, my name is Emily Fox. I'm the social worker in residence with Campaign for Southern Equality. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, and today we're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Anise Mayberry of Tears Free Academy and the Box Breakers Program and Thrive with Pride in Georgia. Um, she is also the author of Educational Disobedience, um, a homeschool mom, you do so much. Um, is there anything that I've left out of that introduction that you would want to add? <laughs> I think you sufficiently covered it. I, I think my greatest job is um, being a homeschool mom. And, you know, because being a mom is like the greatest job that I've ever had. It has no pay, no benefits, no sick time. Um, but not only do I get to be a mom to the two children that I gave birth to, but I get to show up in our community and be a mom to all of these other kids who never really had a parent advocating for them academically or even legally. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Yeah. Well, um, do you want to go ahead and, and talk a little bit more about what Tears Free Academy is? Absolutely. Yeah. So Tears Free Academy actually started in 2010, 2011, because of my daughter. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, we moved to Rockdale County, and my daughter was bullied so severely that she experienced a psychotic break. And that psychotic break led to a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, social anxiety disorder, and, you know, I didn't know what to do because we were in and out of the adolescent mental health care system. And I truly thought that the adolescent mental health care system 
and the educational system were better connected than what they were because that's what they told me they did at conferences, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when you're in the system and you realize just how broken it is, um, because I said to one of her caseworkers, I said, hey, you know, we've been here, um, and that time we were at Peachford. I said, we've been here for 14 days, and, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of schoolwork. What are we doing for her schooling? And they said, well, it's up to her school to determine how they're going to do it. And I'm like, um, okay, well, that's clearly not happening. So what are we going to do? And no one had a plan. And I mean, Emily, it was like, you know, I'm watching my child struggle mentally. And I knew that if I didn't step in, that she was mm -hmm. going to struggle academically too. Yeah. And so, you know, we got back home. I tried to send her back to school. Uh, and when she attempted suicide, like the ninth time in six months, I said, okay, we've got to do something differently because the school is not going to do anything differently. And for me, that meant that number one, I had to leave my job as the Dean of Graduate Studies. Um, number two, it meant I had to build something for my child, you know? And so I took everything that I had in me and I poured into her and I built it. And in building it, um, it meant that I had to design a curriculum it meant that I had to figure out a way to get her to not just graduate from high school, but also graduate and be able to do the and what's next. Mm -hmm. um, and the beautiful thing about me doing this for my daughter is, you know, it's like I tell everyone, I said, you know, I, I thought I was building a paddle boat to go on a river, but I actually ended up building a Navy ship that's prepared to sail in the oceans. And so after I built it for her and she graduated and she ended up going to Arizona State University and she's graduated from there with her bachelor's in business and now she's getting her MBA and she owns her own virtual insurance agency. Wow. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> just, it turned out to be an incredible experience. So, you yeah. know, fast forward to a year later and I'm on the deck with my neighbor. We're sitting out there having wine talking. And I find out that her daughter's dropped out of school for the exact same reason of why my child was trying to attempt suicide every week. Mm -hmm. And so I said to her, I said, Crystal, I said, I might be able to help, but I'm not really sure. I said, you know, this is going to sound so crazy, but if you will just ride with me, I think we can get Beth a high school diploma. And so when I told Crystal what I wanted to do, she's like, okay, you're right. This sounds insane, but I trust you. <laughs> so in all of that, I was able to help Beth get a high school diploma. Well, we found out that the, her grandmother didn't have a high school diploma. Her mom didn't have a high school diploma and her stepdad didn't have a high school diploma. So through this program, I was able to get the entire family high school diplomas. Wow. Um, it was so, I mean, Emily, this has like been so amazing. And then fast forward to 2017 mm -hmm. and I got a message from my friends, um, Jen and Jamie, who own my sister's room in Atlanta. And they said, hey, Anise, um, Saul has found a young man in Piedmont Park um, mm -hmm. and he's trying to get some GED books so that he can help him get his GED. And I was like, oh, I said, let's, let's don't do the GED because I knew that the GED at the time only mm -hmm. had a 20% graduation rate, meaning that 80% of the people who took the GED test failed it. They failed one or more sections of the GED. The GED is not, it, it's a very hard test. It's not a bad test. It's just a very hard test. And the yeah. way that they've reorganized the GED to be all common core aligned, it's even harder. So, mm. you know, I'm all about giving people a pathway to success, but can we not set people up for failure? You know, can we not do that? Uh, and um, so I told him, I said, you know, I said, I think I can get him a high school diploma. So, you know, and at that time I had no money for curriculum or anything. So I really depended on the community. Um, you know, I, I even had to beg to get a laptop. So, I mean, it was like literally every night I would send out a message. I'm like, hey, does anyone have a laptop we can use? Hey, can mm -hmm. anyone, um, is anyone willing to donate $20 so I can buy, you know, another, um, another classroom login license so that he can keep going? Or does anyone have $15 so I can buy books? 
And Atlanta Pride Committee saw what I was doing and saw what I was trying to do. And they called me and they were like, hey, Dr. Mabry, um, we've got a thing called a community reinvestment grant. You know, why don't you apply for that under the foundation? And I was like, okay. And so that's how the Thrive with Pride program was born, was from me begging for dollars from people <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> and, you know, and so fast forward to 20, the end of 2018, and I come up with this other program called the Chief's Diploma Program, which I bring into a police department. And I'm like, hey, for the people who are, you know, because a lot of times in law enforcement, you tend to see the same people over and over and over, right? And what we found out is that now if you don't have a, a, um, if you're not in school, you can't get a driver's license, number one. So that creates a challenge right there in itself because you're going to drive. That just means you're going to drive illegally without a license. And so I talked to Chief Hart and I was like, hey, you know, I've got this program. I, I want to try to pilot it. And Chief Hart was like, well, bring it to my police department. So one day during probation, she asked people who were on repeat probation. She said, hey, um, do you have a high school diploma? Emily, eight out of 10 people did not have a high school diploma. So she's like, okay. So then we started working with the Southwest Circuit Probation Department, which is the state probation down here in South Georgia. And they were like, we love your program. You know, we can incorporate this as part of their, pro as part of, um, their probation requirements. So our, we graduated our first class of 13 people. And not one of those 13 graduates has gotten into any trouble since they've gotten a diploma. Um, most of them have gone on to the technical college. So fast forward to this year, COVID hits. And, you know, it, people would come to me and they would say, okay, you've got Thrive with Pride for the gay students. Mm -hmm. And you've got the Chief's Diploma Program for people who get in trouble. But what do you have for the rest of us? And I was like, Oh, you know what? I forgot about the rest of y'all. I was like, well, y'all can join one of those programs. But yeah, it was like they wanted their own special program. So that was where the Box Breakers came from. And Box Breakers was actually a name that one of my graduates gave me in 2018. Um, she called me a Box Breaker. And she's like, you know, she said, you broke down every wall that I ever had about school. You broke down every avenue that I ever thought that I couldn't do. She's like, you just, you took what I thought I couldn't do and you opened up the box and showed me all the possibilities. She's actually in college now to become a trauma-informed care specialist. So, what? yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome story to hear um, kind of your personal experience with your daughter and, and how that kind of blossomed over the years into with your connections um, with it sounds it sounds like queer organizers, LGBTQ organizers um, with connections to start helping um, LGBTQ homeless youth and then uh, how that has like kind of looking at systemic issues that are out there around access to like the struggle with GED that was something that was really surprising I think when I heard that statistic 20% um, success rate for the GED exam. Um, and yeah, so thank you for sharing all of that. Um, I'm, I'm curious if there are any challenges that you're facing right now with doing this work. Ooh, I, I think Emily, honestly, the biggest challenge um, because all of the GED programs in the state of Georgia and really throughout the nation, they've had, they've either closed or they've downsized because the GED had no online curriculum, so they couldn't take the students who were in class and say, hey, go online. My okay. curriculum has always been online. So, and you know, I'm part of the National Literacy Database. So mm -hmm. the GED program started referring students to me. Well, I didn't budget for a pandemic. You know, no right. one did, but especially, you know, it's like, I'm a little bitty, teeny, tiny nonprofit foundation. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have coffers of money printed in the back that I can just run to. Right. But I was getting this large influx of students and I'm not going to turn them away because I knew that if I said no to them, that that would probably be the last opportunity that they ever had to reach out 
to get a high school diploma, to try it again. Because, you know, with my, the population that I work with, if they, they've heard no so many times in their life, that no just becomes a stop. And I knew that I just had to figure it out. Um, and so I just started, every time somebody would tell me about, you know, an opportunity or a grant, I mean, the Atlanta drag community was phenomenal. They did an online virtual fundraiser for me um, to help me buy curriculum licenses. It seems like every time I turn around and went, okay, I need more money for licenses. I need more money for licenses. But online curriculum is my greatest expense and it's also my greatest struggle. Um, and my birthday is coming up on Friday. So I'm actually launching a, I've launched my own fundraiser. And uh, because again, I need curriculum licenses. I have a wait list of people trying to get in the program and GED programs mm -hmm. are still referring people to me. Wow. So that, well, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's, that's probably been yeah. my biggest challenge is just finding funding to purchase curriculum licenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting how uh, COVID is directly affecting your program um, since GED doesn't have that access. Yes. It's interesting here. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, how can if folks watch this video and they're like, well, I want to support, how can they... How can they do that? How can they find you? How can they support you? So you can find me um, on Instagram at Dr. Anise Mabry. The fundraiser is running on Facebook, and I'm going to be sharing that again later on today. I'm on Twitter as Dr. Anise Mabry. Um, Facebook is at Dr. Anise Mabry, and also at Tears, and that's T-I-E-R-S, Free Academy. Um, and, you know, so people always ask, well, what, you know, what's your greatest need? Truthfully, the greatest need is curriculum. It cost me $840 to get one student through a full curriculum. And, you know, some people say, well, you know, I can't do $840. And I'm like, well, you know, any amount helps. It's $60, students pay $60 a class. And, you know, sometimes some people will say, well, you know, I'll sponsor a class. Cool. You know, that means that and most of the students in my program, they need seven or fewer classes to graduate. Mm. So, you know, and then sometimes we yeah. get, of course, we get the ones that need like 10 or 11 or, or, you know, sometimes even 16 classes. But that that's really my biggest struggle is, you know, sponsoring the students. Um, also sponsoring Wi-Fi hotspots for us, because up until this point, my students have always been able to go into McDonald's or Starbucks or you know, the hotspot locations and sit down and do their work. Well, I don't have that option anymore because COVID changed all that. So, um, you know, you can sponsor a hotspot and internet access for a student for three months for $120. Um, you know, so it's just, it, there are different ways that you can pour in. Um, $5 helps to get a transcript for a student because, you know, no one waived the transcript fees. Um, yeah. So if folks wanted to say sponsor a student's Wi-Fi for three months, they would go to your website at Dr. Nice Mayberry and find. And they can link. click on the donate link. And once you click on the donate link, you can put in the note section what you want to support. Yeah. And we will make sure that your money stays in stays in that category and support students for that need. That's great. Um, is there anything else? I know we're kind of um, running up on our time for our interview, but is there anything else that you would want to add, let people know about the work you're doing? Well, we also do the Christmas with the cop. So if you want to sponsor a child in rural Georgia, um, and the, what we do is we work with the police department and we go with blue lights and sirens into neighborhoods that aren't used to having the best relationship with law enforcement, and we deliver toys to them. We also do backpack with the cop. Um, we usually do national night out, but due to COVID, um, national night out was canceled. We're hoping to bring back our fall carnival with the cop. So, you know, this is a way for us to really build bridges uh, where there have been barricades in communities. And I'm just grateful to Southern Equality for the opportunity, for supporting me financially, and for sharing your platform with me. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, yeah, I... Thank you so much. You know, it's an honor to talk with you and share this uh, conversation with folks as well. 
Um, if folks are interested in watching the rest of the interviews, they are going to be paste posted on our Instagram page or Facebook page, and you can find them at our website as well. Um, I also just want to let folks know if you joined late um, that our next Black Lives Matter grant round is currently open. So if anyone wants to learn more or nominate someone, they can find that information at southernequality.org. Uh, we also just today had our next COVID-19 rapid response grant round go out. So if folks, LGBTQ folks in the South are in need of emergency assistance, um, you can find the application for that uh, grant round at our website at southernequality.org as well. So thank you so much, Dr. Mayberry. <laughs> oh, no, thank you, Emily. It's truly been a pleasure and I look forward to working with Southern Equality in the future. Sounds great. Okay, take care. All right, you as well. Bye. Bye-bye.